Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over solving linear, system of linear equations by setting them equal to each other. And because I'm currently teaching math in Berlin, Germany, this is also known in German as the Gleichstellungsverfahren or the setting them equal to method. Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over one example. In the previous video, which I'll put the link at the end of this video, I went over two other a little bit simpler examples. This one may be a little harder, but you can watch the other video if you like also. But in this one, I'm going to go over two, excuse me, one example. Now, this is solving systems of linear equations by setting them equal to each other. What we're doing in a sense, or what we're really doing, is we're finding when we solve these two linear equations, because this is the equation for a line, this is the equation for a line, and what we're doing is we're finding the single pair of x and y values that is a solution to this equation and is also a solution to this equation. And because this is the equation of a line and this is the equation of a line, it is also the point on the xy coordinate system where this line intersects this line or these two lines intersect each other. And we are going to do that by setting them equal to each other. The only way we can set them equal to each other is if we solve both equations for the same variable. We could solve both equations for x or both equations for y. It doesn't matter. In this case, we have this lone y here. And you can see we have 6, 3, and 9, which are all multiples of 3. So in this case, it's going to be easiest if we take this first equation, solve it for y, and then we'll take this equation and solve it for y, and then set them equal to each other. I like to write the equations down on my piece of paper, draw a line under them, give myself a little time to think, Think about what am I going to do? We're going to take the first equation and we're going to set it equal or solve it for y. Now, in order to do that, I have plus 5x. That means I need to move the 5x to the other side. That means I need to subtract 5x from both sides. I'm going to do that. On the left-hand side, the 5 and the minus 5 go to 0. That means I have y equals. And on the left-hand side of my equal sign, I'm left with minus 5x minus 17 and I have solved the first equation for y. Now, we're said we're going to solve the other equation for y also, and you kind of have to notice in this case that this equation, all the coefficients are multiples of 3, and there's a 3 in front of the y, then a minus 6, and a minus 9. That means I'm going to take this whole equation, all three terms, and divide the whole equation by 3. And then I'll be left with y, and I can solve for y. Because minus 6x divided by 3 is minus 2x plus 3y, or plus 3y divided by 3 is equal to 1y, or as we just write down the y, equals minus 9 divided by 3 is minus 3. You can see now I have y. I just solved this one for y. And then, and why did I do that? Because I'm going to set them equal to each other after I solve them both for y. And in order to solve this one for y, I'm going to add 2x. So I want to move the 2x to the other side of the equal sign. Plus 2x on the left-hand side. Plus 2x on the right-hand side. Draw a line. Add them up. Minus 2 and 2 goes to 0. Or minus 2 plus 2 goes to 0. You're left with y equals 2x minus 3. Now you can see I have the first equation and the second equation solved for y. That means if 2x minus 3 is equal to y and minus 5x minus 17 is equal to y. That means that 2x minus 3 is equal to minus 5x minus 17. Okay, this is the setting them equal to each other. This is the gleich zetzungs portion of this Verfahren. That's why it's called that. Now, I'm going to bring this equation and my two original equations onto the next slide and we'll solve for x. Here I have my two original equations. I've eliminated the y. I have just x, one equation, one variable. I can solve for x very easily. I like to move all my x terms to the left-hand side, all my constants to the right. I like to move all the x terms first. In order to do that, I'm going to add 5x to both sides, add them up. I get 7x minus 3 on the left-hand side, minus 5 plus 5 is 0, so that goes away, equals minus 17. Now I'm going to take my constants. I have minus 3. I'm going to move that to the other side, so I'm going to put 3 and 3 on both sides, add 3 to both sides, divide and divide that, add them up. You get that 7x, the minus 3 and the 3 go to 0. 7x is equal to minus 14 because minus 17 plus 3 is minus 14. And you divide now both sides of the equation by the value in front of the x because it's 7x. 
and you get that x is minus 2. So now, once again, we have the x term. It's minus 2. The x value is minus 2. We can take this minus 2, substitute it into either this equation or this equation, solve for y. It doesn't matter which one. You get the same answer. I am going to use the first equation because I don't have a negative sign here. It makes it a little less complicated. 5x, x is minus 2. Take the x out, put the minus 2 in. You get 5 times minus 2 is minus 10 plus y equals minus 17. Now we want to solve for the y value, so I'm going to take the t minus 10 and move it to the other side. That means I'm going to add 10 to both sides. I get y equals minus 7. Now you can see, once again, I have my x term and my y term. That means that that point, x minus 2, 7, excuse me, x minus 2, y minus 7, is hopefully a solution to this equation and this equation, and is therefore the point where these two lines intersect. I say hopefully because we're going to just check it really quick to be almost 100% sure. I'm going to substitute these two values, x and y, into both equations. Hopefully this equal sign will remain true. I write the first equation down, 5x plus y equals minus 17. Substitute minus 2 for x, minus 7 for y. 5 times minus 2 is 10, or minus 10, minus 7 equals minus 17. The left hand is minus 17, the right hand is minus 17. That means the equal sign holds true, and that tells me that this point is a solution to this equation. Well, I want to make sure that that point is also a solution to the other equation. Write it down, substitute the values in, simplify it. They're both minus 9, and that point is now confirmed to be a solution to this equation and this equation. And that is our answer, minus 2, minus 7. Okay, there you go. That is solving systems of linear equations by setting them equal to each other. Solve each equation for the same variable, set them equal to each other, and once again, use the same process we used to solve for x and y. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you can and should do all of the following three things. Please subscribe to my channel. Get, uh, no, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And here is the link to the other video that has two more examples for solving systems of linear equations by setting them equal to each other. Thank you very much. We will see you in the next video.